community participation and all those things that are important that local government municipalities are expected to perform uh, in their areas of jurisdiction. That is very, very much important. And today we, we've decided that we must get this prior briefing from the Office of the Auditor General so that uh, they share with us the audit outcomes of these municipalities, so that they share with us the financial state of these municipalities, so that next week, on the 13th, when we visit these municipalities, we must engage them with a prior knowledge and adequate information about what is happening. And this is quite important. This is what we think we need to do to ensure that we maximize the work that we do in respect of oversight. Uh, with those words, uh, as I said, all of you, a heartily welcome to this important meeting. Just the 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 apologies. Uh, I know that there are eight members who are part of this meeting. Uh, we have noted about uh, three apologies. Uh, an apology from uh, uh, Honorable Tertua of Kaiserton. An apology from our whip, uh, Honorable Bartlett. She said she'll try her level best to log in, but she has a, a consultation with the doctor. And uh, Honorable Smith has just indicated that Honorable Bannon Host uh, is unable to be part of this meeting. On the same vein, let me take this opportunity formally to welcome Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith, as we are informed, uh, is now permanent member of this committee. Uh, he's replacing uh, Honorable Karen Fraser uh, from the Northwest. Uh, he represents the Democratic Party in this particular uh, committee. Sir, you, Honorable Member, you are heartily welcome. Let us have a fruitful, a wonderf wonderful uh, engagement. Let us be empowered uh, and, and, and learn a lot from your own experiences and we hope that your presence in this particular committee will help us to, to to deliver on our mandate will help this committee to do its work very very effectively and accomplish its own predetermined objectives any other apology that i've not received that has not been brought to my attention yes those are the apologies that that we have as I indicated, we are going to receive uh, the three presentations from the Office of the Auditor General. I'm advised that we are going to receive three separate presentations. Uh, and three presenters will speak to those uh, presentations per municipality. And let me invite a, a leader of the delegation from the Office of the Auditor General to spell out how they, they would like to, to do their presentations. My proposal is that let each presentation take about uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, so that we, we have more time to, to engage with each presentation. We'll take a presentation, engage with it, go to the second one, engage with it, go to the third one and engage with it. I'm quite also conscious of the fact that uh, somewhere, somehow, members might be battling with load shedding, but nevertheless, we'll try to expedite this meeting as much as possible. Or well, what must we do? Let's take all the three presentations at a go and they have to engage with the three presentations because I, I guess that they overlap. 15 minutes, have a maximum per presentation, and then we'll take it from there. Over to you. You are invited. Um, thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Dumisani Tsebekulu. Um, my role within the Office of the Auditor General is that of being the business unit leader uh, within the Gauteng province. Um, I want to express the gratitude on our own chair and the members for us to be given this opportunity to engage with yourselves uh, on the three municipalities. 
that is the city of Tuane, city of Johannesburg, as well as Mfuleni local municipalities. I also want to express the words of gratitude from the Water General, Mr. Gan Maluleke. With me, Chairperson, I've got the colleagues uh, from the Housing Business Unit leaders uh, who are going to give us the presentations per each municipality. Uh, Honorable Chair, I will take the opportunity to introduce the delegation from my side. Representing the team that was auditing seats of Tuane will be Mr. Tolani Zikwele. Um, after Tolani Zikwele is done, he'll be followed by Mr. Eugene. Um, uh, Eugene will be talking to us about the city of Johannesburg. And then lastly, it will be Mr. Nerosen Vekensami. And Mr. Vekensami will be talking to us about the Fuleni local municipalities. Also joining me as part of the delegation, Honorable Chair, uh, is Mr. Msizi Mavundla. Mr. Msizi Mavundla is um, the technical senior manager within the Houting Business Unit. Uh, I also have Ms. Nicola Dickin, uh, who's the stakeholder liaison manager in the Houghton province. Uh, and I also have other colleagues who are supporting us in terms of our parliamentary work. Thank you so much, Chairperson. If you allow, I will invite Mr. Polani Zikwele uh, to come through and talk to us uh, on the seat of Tuane. Thank you so much, Chair. Just, just before he proceeds, let me just hasten to say that just this year, I've had a, a two meetings with the Office of the Auditor General, where in which we have agreed that we are going to work very, very closely with the Office of the Auditor General in order for us to impact positively in the work that we do. We will have to work with the Office of the Auditor General. And we have agreed that at least once a month or once in two months, we deal with specific municipalities and, and 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 the office of the auditor general helps us in that in that respect. For me, this is quite important, and I thought perhaps I must just underscore that particular point. Yeah, thank you. Over to you. Um, thank you, honorable chair. Um, I'll put up my video. Um, it should appear soon enough. Um, honorable chair. If I can maybe request to to be flighting the slides from my side so that it can be a, a bit easier for me to just move through the, the slides. Um, that would be greatly appreciated on the chair. Um, uh, maybe first and foremost, uh, honorable chairs to, to greet honorable members um, in this meeting and other colleagues um, that are in, um, this this particular session, um, I want. Uh, I think uh, maybe let me share my screen. Um, maybe uh, honourable chair, if you can confirm if you are seeing the screen from your side. Yeah. Yes, we can see. Okay. Just pause it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. So, Honorable Chair, I'll be taking you through the slide presentation of the, um, the Tswane municipality. I think first and foremost, um, I would like to start with the vision and mission of, of the Office of the Auditor General. Um, the vision being that um, as an office, we, we, we see ourselves um, to be recognized by our stakeholders as a relevant Supreme Audit institution that enhances public sector accountability. Um, and, and, and our mission being um, as informed by, our, by, by the constitutional mandate um, being to exist to strengthen our country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability and governance in the public sector through auditing uh, thereby building uh, uh, public confidence. Um, Honorable Chair, um, um, as a first slide, we had this slide on key messages, but um, not wanting to du duplicate myself in the, in the upcoming slide, I will reflect back to this particular slide at the end of my presentation 
but most of what's sitting in this slide will be touched on in the, in the, in the following slides, Chair. Um, so, um, Honorable Chair, maybe uh, first and foremost, um, maybe for me to start with the um, audit outcomes for the city of Tswane for the um, uh, year ending 2021-22. Um, um, so, Honorable Chair, from an outcome point of view, the audit opinion that we issued to the city for the year is an adverse uh, opinion. Uh, and Chair, if you compare this adverse opinion to the past three years, um, the, the city had had unqualified um, audit opinions in the past. Um, and obviously this opinion then would mean that this is a regression um, um, compared to obviously the past audit outcomes that have been issued. But, but Chair, maybe also just to bring context to this audit outcome as, as as as, neg as 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 it might be, um, I think when you look at this audit opinion and, and 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 maybe look at what it means in terms of what has been there in the history, mm -hmm. I think what is clear is that um, um, most of the issues that ended up being a qualification area is issues that um, were repeat issues. Um, and, 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 and one or two of them are issues um, that um, 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 might have been new. And maybe, Chair, maybe just, just to confirm, um, is my video still on? Because uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening on my Yeah, side. the slides, we can see the slides. Okay, so um, just my focus video... focus on the slide. If there is a problem, we will let you know. Okay, okay. Then I'll continue with the slides, um, um, honorable chair. So, 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 so the context in relation to the qualification area, um, chairperson, is that majority of these issues are issues that have been recurring from uh, that have been raised in the past, and and some of them um, were material but um, were corrected through the audit process. But I think uh, when you look at the audit opinion and the context of it in the current year. It speaks to um, management not having put, you know, adequate action in place to correct the processes and the weaknesses that would have resulted in these qualification areas, and hence why um, you see the cumulative effect over the past couple of years um, leading up to a qualification um, in, in in the various areas. Chair, um, and 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 when you look at even um, so 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 you would. Uh, attest the outcome uh, to the worsening internal control environment chair. Um, actually, if, 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 you, if you consider the history um, of, 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 of the quality of financial statements in the environment. And you would have noticed chair, even in the past reports that we would have issued, we would have also reflected on the quality of the financial statements that would have been issued by the city. It, uh, as, as, as not meeting you know, the, the quality standards that um, it would have required and, um, and, and, um, uh, and, and there being material corrections that would have needed to be effected you know, um, to bring the financial statements to, 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 to a standard that um, is, is more reflected. And then Chair, I think when you, when you then look at the, the key root causes in relation to to these qualification areas, um, um, there was a lack of, you know, adequate financial disciplines and record keeping within the environment. And I spoke to the effective action plans that are there that 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 were not put in place or monitored adequately to ensure that the weaknesses in the process and controls are addressed sufficiently. And also in relation to just accountability um, overall in the environment. Um, um, we, we noticed that uh, there was no accountability for transgressions that would have um, been, um, been been made by, by by officials or anyone implicated within the city. Um, also, chair, um, the issue of um, inadequate skills and critical functions also contributed to these qualification areas, and 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 lastly, the the issue of effective governance 
um, not being adequate, um, especially in relation to um, um, audit committee, internal audit, and, and, and we cannot um, also um, uh, not mention the effect of the instabilities within the environment that, that, that it would have had uh, leading up to this particular outcome. And then, um, Honorable Chair, looking at the issue of compliance. Um, so, um, all in all, we've, we've raised uh, material compliance findings in seven um, subject matters. And I will go into the detail of what those non compliance issues are in the upcoming slides. Um, the overall uh, uh, non, non compliance in the, in the environment um, have always been the material non compliance instances. We, we have always raised it. And, and, and actually, um, when you look over the past uh, three years, the city has not really um, made strides in improving the environment, especially around compliance. And the stagnation in, in, in the non-compliance environment within the city is, is attributable to the poor culture um, of compliance in the environment due to lack of accountability and poor monitoring of implementation of policies. Um, in the inadequate consequence management um, in, the, in, in the environment, transgressors not being held accountable um, and, and the correct tone not being set uh, from the top. And, and um, also partly uh, when you look at some of the specifics in relation to the compliance, there was also an, an issue of inadequate knowledge um, um, on, on, on procurement and contract management prescripts. And lastly, obviously, um, lack of adequate controls um, to prevent instances of, of, of non-compliance in the environment. And then Chair, when you then look at um, the, the, the aspect of performance information, uh, performance information request for the first time in the previous audit cycle, um, when um, the, the, the city um, had material findings in relation to usefulness and reliability, of their indicators and targets that are sitting in their APP and APR. Uh, but we saw a further regression. I think in the prior year, uh, Circular 88 was partially implemented, but with the additional implementation of Circular 88, um, one could see the outcomes as a stagnation in that, you know, there were still material findings in usefulness and reliability. But when you look at the number of indicators um, compared to the prior year, um, the current year had more indicators that had issues. Um, so, um, so in relation then to, 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 to the root cause, uh, poor audit outcomes um, or poor outcomes in relation to um, performance information, um, it's, it's mostly attributable to the poor implementation of Circular 88. Um, and, and also inadequate action being put in place to address weaknesses that we would have highlighted in the past. Also the issue of poor record keeping in the environment, um, the issue of listings having errors, uh, pretty much speaking to the recording aspects of, um, of, of performance management, and also the issue of inadequate quality assurance processes in the environment um, um, to ensure that whatever that's you know what whatever that's reported is reliable, and and lastly, obviously on the usefulness aspect, the issue of of, of indicators, some of the indicators not being well defined, uh, with the expected performance not being clearly linked to service delivery, and as I said, um, um, chair, um, the issues around performance information were more in relation to uh, the measurability. Um, quote usefulness and, 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 and also the issue of reliability, measurability in relation to indicators not being smart and reliability in relation to um, either errors picked up in, in, in the reported performance uh, and related listings uh, coupled with um, limitations um, that we experienced in the environment. So, so Chair, uh, pretty much when, when you look at the, the audit outcome analysis in the environment, this is pretty much the picture for, 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 for Twane. And, and, and you'll see, Chair, in the, in the upcoming slides, it's more just 
um, just further detail of what's sitting in the slide. And obviously, majority of, of, of the aspects and the root causes that would have led to these outcomes would be um, would have already been touched in this slide. Being chair, this slide pretty much it's, it's it's just a slide, just unpacking you know um, the detail in terms of um, the nature of the um, the issues that we picked up that led to the qualification areas. So all in all, um, twelve. Um, financial statement line items and disclosures were impacted uh, or and resulted in qualification. Um, uh, property plant and equipment, um, majority of the issues being around the accounting of um, prior period adjustments, classification, the issue of inadequate uh, impairment, and, and also disclosures in the financial statements not meeting grant requirements. Um, Payables, um, also, um, I think with payables, um, not all uh, liabilities were recorded um, or accounted for in the books. Some of the liabilities that were recorded could not be supported by the municipality. And also um, the accrued leaf balance liability could not be accurately calculated. And then chair, um, the cash flow statements also. So, so then when you look at the, the cash flow statement, when you look at um, number five, which is statement of comparison of budgets, um, yeah, the contingencies, the useful, uh, the, 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 the UIFW, unauthorized, fruitless and wasteful, and, and even number 12, and number eight, the prior period error. You see majority of the issues that we picked up there relate to errors that we picked up in what was reported by the municipality in the financial statements, um, and also, um, uh, aspects similar to the PPE of uh, disclosures not not having been in accordance with with, with GRAP and 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 and, and uh, in other instances then like for example with the employee cost um, um, the issue then of 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 some of the um, transactions selected for audit not uh, being supported. Or, or, or records not being provided to the audit process. So, Chair, yeah, I, I think, <clears throat> because if, if I go into the detail of each chair, it will take more time than, than what you, you have allowed. But I think in, in summary, Chair, yeah, these are the issues that led to the adverse opinion um, 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 in the 2021-22 um, uh, financial year, Chair. Yeah. And then moving over then to to um, the issue of compliance. Um, obviously, the, the issue of the financial statements and the quality um, requirements, the legislation, um, uh, the, the, the non compliance with that is attributable to the issues, the material issues that we've, we've picked up, as, as indicated in the previous slide. There was a number of uh, uh, procurement and contract management issues pretty much non-compliance with procurement prescripts. And in a number of instances, um, documentation not being provided. And um, also the aspects of deviations um, that were approved in the environment not necessarily comply with legislation. And power assessment, these deviations were more, uh, in really, uh, were more as a result of, of, of poor planning and inappropriate um, um, basis. Of, of 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 you know you know concluding that it's a it's a deviations and, and obviously non-compliant extensions in the environment. Um, I spoke to the aspect of consequence management. I think pretty much um, when you look at and, and we we'll touch on the irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure balances and, and the extent of consequences that has, has been um, affected in that area. But pretty much as a result of 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 of, of transgressions, not you know um, following appropriate processes uh, from a consequence management point of view and accountability, uh, we had issues there. I think the other aspect on non-compliance that we had, which um, affected the environment aspect, was the the issue of um, treatment of wastewater and disposing of of effluent not being compliant with environment legislation or prescripts. And then the aspect of expenditure management, 
obviously uh, the non-prevention of irregular, fruitless and wasteful and payments, uh, number of payments not being made within 30 days. Uh, strategic management, um, I spoke to the performance information and the issues around there and the inadequate performance management processes and controls that were in that area. And then asset management attributable to the issues that we picked up when we audited assets, which are also part of the qualification that we, we highlighted in the previous slide. So when you look at the picture, um, chairs I indicated, material non-compliance, the change, um, and um, <clears throat> we, we saw a regression in two subject matters being uh, the quality of financial statements um, uh, in, in the context of the outcome and the environment man, environmental management in respect of the effluent disposal. And then Chair, I think in this slide, it's, it's more just a sub summary of um, audit work around serve, key service delivery indicators. Um, we did work in water and sanitation, energy and roads, um, but here we are pretty much just um, bringing forward um, the aspect of poor performance in relation to achievement with um, related to service delivery. But apart from that, Chair, even for the indicators that uh, were seemingly achieved in the APR, majority of them could not be supported or majority of them could be deteriorated. So um, as much as the actual achievement that the APR is sitting 45, the remaining indicators that were achieved still had issues. Um, yes, and, and then Chair, uh, um, in the, so Chair, the next slide is just um, just looking at uh, part of the audit, we also look at key projects um, that impact or uh, that that have uh, an impact on, on on service delivery that are currently being you know affected by the municipality and um, of the projects visited um, <clears throat> the the the, the Royval, uh, project still obviously because. Um, um, of the issues that continue to, to be there in the environment in relation to completing that project and, and addressing the issues that were highlighted in the prior year. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the issue of um, the, the effluent discharge and its impact on the environment and the related harm to the public is still there. Um, we understand that you know the, the 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 municipality has provided alternative supply of water. However, um, that issue and and its impact is still being seen in the environment. The other thing, uh, the other project that we looked at is the project on on Fort West Extension Four, uh, the housing project there. Um, there, um, the issues that we picked up uh, was that uh, a number of the units were completed and ready for uh, occupation and then because of the delay in issuing the, the, the certificates the occupation certificates uh, some of these um, units were legally occupied um, also the issue of bulk water infrastructure not being there and also other concerns that we picked up in relation to the delay in the project and and the price variations that have uh, been coming in in the environment um, obviously uh, meaning that the initial awarded amount or awarded budget for the for the project would have been you know exceeded, and then chair, I think here chair is just um, a, a pictorial of the irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. I think um, um, chair and the members you, you can see that the, the municipality is holding quite huge balances of irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure, and though irregular expenditure, when you look at what uh, was incurred in the current year decreased, but that decrease is not attributable to an improved environment, but more of processes not picking up all instances of non-compliance. And Chair, when you look at the, 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 the three blocks on your right in relation to recovery write-off and dealing with these instances, you will see uh, comparison year in year out, you'll see um, there has been a, a poor you know, um, uh, consequence management and, and poor, you know, processes or action in terms of addressing this, these, these transgressions and, and related expenditure. Um, and then Chair, I think here Chair, it's, it's just um, a slide highlighting the financial health issues of the city 
their inability to source additional funding um, um, due to obviously the, the Moody's uh, rating. But we are seeing also the, the, the financial health issues of the city also impacting the aspects of performance and that some of the key service delivery indicators could not be achieved or could not be performed due to issues around funding, which is impacting the, the, the asset infrastructure in relation to maintenance and it not being effective in terms of you know providing adequate service delivery. So so and so 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 this slide is more of just summarizing um, those that that aspect and the impact of, of financial viability in the city and 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 and, and, and the, and to the extent to which it's impacting all the other areas um, within the environment. Then, Chair, this slide is it's pretty much speaking to the, the transversal root causes, which is uh, the root causes that I've uh, spoken to in my previous slide, mainly the slide that I spoke to on the audit outcomes, um, the issue of consequence management, um, and, 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 and maybe, Chair, on consequence management, just um, to, to highlight I think that the instabilities within the internal audit function also contributed a great deal in terms of the city making progress on consequence management. And I think as soon as the city fills vacancies that are in that unit, um, because it's a unit that is predominantly responsible for making investigations or assisting the city in, in, in coordinating effort of investigating and holding people accountable. So, the continuation of the vacancies in that environment um, will continue, obviously, to have an impact on consequence management. I spoke about financial disciplines and records management, the skills gap and effective action plans. And I, um, the next column just speaks to the key recommendations share um, in, re in relation to then what needs to then be put in place. Um, I'll touch on some of these in, in, the, in the following slides. I won't go into the detail of them. And then, Chair, this slide speaks to material irregularities. Um, there are 11 material irregularities in the environment um, um, with an estimated loss of 454 million. Um, eight of them, the accounting officer is taking appropriate action, and there is some progress, even though not uh, the, the action that has been taken, um, um, some. Uh, some of the action has not yet been completed, but we are seeing the accounting officer taking, you know, action in terms of addressing those. Three of the material irregularities, um, the accounting officer, um, um, there was issues with, you know, taking actions on those three, and as a result of that, there were recommendations that were proposed and remedial action followed in relation to those three. Um, and Chair, um, the left side of this slide just speaks to the nature of the categories of the, the material irregularities that are there in the environment. And then Chair, um, I think with this um, um, slide, Chair, this slide, it's pretty much touching on um, the accounting, accountability ecosystem and the failures in, in the accounting accountability ecosystem um, that resulted in, in where we are, um, what did not happen in each structure of this ecosystem that resulted in, 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 in the <clears throat> outcome that we are looking at. And I think in summary, Chair, um, senior management failed to ensure that effective systems of internal controls are in place the financial and performance reporting and compliance, and also did not hold officials accountable and, and, and implement timely consequence management. Because as much as I8 deals with the investigation aspect, line managers within the city are also having the responsibility of holding people accountable um, where there are transgressions that are identified. The, <clears throat> the audit committee did not appropriately advise the accounting officer on internal control weaknesses and also in ensuring that there's adequate oversight in the city. Um, uh, and then in relation to the mayor, uh, the mayor failed to provide adequate oversight in ensuring that prior audit issues are addressed, improving the viability issues in the, in the environment and also 
ensuring that consequence management is timely effected. And then in relation to counsel and, 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 and MPEC, there was an adequate oversight in ensuring that all cases of unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure are timely investigated and transgressors are held accountable. Um, also, what we noticed is that MPEC, the composition of or, or the, the, the members within MPEC are fairly new. Um, and, and we are hoping that with them being, you know, better or more familiar with the environment, we should, you know, we are hoping that we should see an improvement in terms of them exercising oversight in this area. And then in terms of intergovernmental inter relations, uh, I think uh, their, their chair, I think our, 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 what did not happen is that uh, there was inadequate support and oversight by coordinating departments to the city, evidenced by, evidence by the ineffective financial recovery plan and the worsened uh, control environment as a result of prior issues not being addressed. So, so Chair, pretty much that is the summary of what is sitting on the slide in relation to the failures that, 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 um, that we are picking up in our assessment in relation to what did not happen that should have happened to, to ensure that, you know, um, all these issues at least um, are addressed or monitored. And then Chair, um, in relation then Chair to, to the call of action, um, in relation to, you know, the, the issues that, that are there in the environment, uh, I'll, I'll just, um, just summarize this slide. Uh, leadership should set the, the right tone from the top uh, by investigating all issues of, of, of UIFW and applying consequence management. Um, and also there must be adequate monitoring and enforcement of implementation of action plans to improve internal control, to improve the internal control environment. And this is at all levels, um, including the mayor level, um, council level, and, and also um, with the support of the coordinating ministries. Also the issue of proper record keeping and financial disciplines being put in place, um, which will be informed by, 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 by the action plan that will be put there. But those disciplines um, of effective control or preventative control um, must be implemented in the areas of, of, of financial statements, performance and compliance. Um, the issue of capacitation of staff is in critical um, functions. It's, it's, it's important, especially finance, SEM, and internal audit. Um, also, the issue of the maintenance of infrastructure in the city is critical, as we're seeing its impact in the service delivery of the municipality. And um, we know because of its impact, the financial health of, 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 of the municipality is something that needs to be really prioritized. And, and, and lastly, the performance management systems um, um, of the city um, overall uh, need to be re-looked at such that um, you know, poor performance and transgressions or non-implementation of policies can be effectively addressed. Um, yeah, so, so, so Chair, I think, in summary, I'm not sure how far I am um, in relation to, to time, but I hope I didn't take too much time, Chair, and then I can, I can always speak to, to specifics, um, maybe unpack other aspects of the slides. Um, I think, Chair, I've, I've done justice to, to this particular slide, and, 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 and I think that the key message in relation to the issues in China has been addressed in, in, in the slides presented. And um, that then brings me then, Chair, to the end of my presentation. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much. Uh, your, your time had long expired, but given the importance of the information that you, you are sharing with us, I thought perhaps I must allow you to, to finish because there's no point in in, in us not getting the gist of the of, of the problem as such, but but thank you very much. Uh, I think it is quite it is quite clear. I've gone through other presentations, more or less. The structure is the same. The approach is the same. If members allow, can we go to the next uh, one? Is that Enfuden or Johannesburg? Uh, 
And then at the end, we'll then engage with all the presentations because the issues cut across. But I hope that members are taking notes. Yes. Can we go to the next one? Uh, good morning, Honorable Sir. Um, my name is Farelo Yitzin Moloike. I will be taking you through the um, the city of Jobek audit outcomes. Chair, just to confirm if my screen is visible. Morning, Chair. It, it is visible. Oh. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning again, Chair, and to the other on, honorable members, as well as the colleagues within the, the, the meeting. Um, good morning. I will try to be a bit lesser <laughs> than my colleagues from the city of Tony. Um, I always like to start before Polani, because <laughs> it does take a lot of time. <laughs> Um, Chair, I will be taking you through the audit outcomes of the city of Jobek. Um, so this is the first slide that then just summarizes our overall um, key message as well as the, the, the outcomes. I will also just follow the same format, Chair, that we've done for the city of Tony, just to start with and where the audit outcomes um, is sitting. For the city of Jobek, Chair, it is sitting um, as unqualified with, with findings, um, which has been a stagnated audit outcome over the years for the city um, since um, the 2019-2020 financial year. The city is having some areas where they also still have to update or correct their financial statements and the, the, the six areas that are highlighted here, these are the areas which following the submission chair, we then had picked up some, some statements, which fortunately the, the, the management was then able to, to then effect those corrections. And at the, at the end, we then were able to then um, um, issue an opinion that is unqualified on the financial statements. However, as indicated overall, the, the, the audit outcome does have um, other findings and those other findings are then noted in terms of the areas on compliance as well as on performance information and about um, of the five issues that we identified on the uh, compliance with laws and regulations chair um, four of them are repeat the first one has to do with the corrections that then needed to be made on the financial statements which has then um, resulted in then the, that non-compliance um, on the financial statements. We are still seeing issues relating to the increase in irregular as well as fruitless and unauthorized expenditure that is then having an impact on their expenditure management. And some of these chair are as a result of the issues that we are noting on procurement as well as contract management that on some of the procurement is then resulting in the in the um, um, some of those non-compliance being considered as um, irregular expenditure. Um, and then on, on, on contract management chair, we still are having some challenges with how the city is monitoring um, the performance of some of their contractors, as well as um, noting some of the um, um, interest in some of the services service providers that are doing business with the, with the municipality not being declared and some of those service providers being employed by other state institutions. Um, Chair, overall, it is a stagnation as well as it relates to the compliance um, with laws and regulations because over the past couple of years, the city is still having some issues um, on complying with laws and regulation. We do have an issue on consequence management that is also a repeat as a result of um, um, not really investigating the, 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 some of the um, irregular, fruitless, and unauthorized expenditure that we would have identified in the previous years. Um, in the current year, Chair, we saw one of the strategic planning and performance related non compliance with the city not having finalized uh, the service delivery agreements with, uh, with the, its um, entities on time. Um, so that was then an issue that resulted in that fifth non compliance with the strategic planning and performance management. Um, Chair, with the area of service delivery and on the scoped in um, area that we, we, we audit uh, relating to service service delivery, we are having a concern that um, over the years we are noting the regression in this area 
where the city was coming from an unqualified with findings space um, on their performance information or service delivery related outcomes um, to having been qualified in the previous year. And in the current year, we have um, issued an adverse opinion following the struggle we were having with some of them, the reported performance information um, without being able to, to validate it or support the, the reported achievements. So it has noted that it, there has been a, a bit of a, um, a regression there, which is one of the key areas that we are have engaged the, the, the ODT to then focus on and start ensuring that they address all the um, um, issues that we've shared with them. As indicated in the, in the other presentation, this is a summary of some of them, the key service delivery indicators that we had noted within the environment. So we had noted these are the key service delivery indicators that were within the environment. And when we were auditing the, the service delivery related performance, we then also focused and ensured that we cover the one that is then mainly reporting on how the Metro has done as it relates to their uh, key basic service delivery um, indicators. And that is um, a mirror priority one that looks at um, the city that gets the basics right. And we did note that overall the indicators um, for that scope team um, was at 76%. However, Chair, there were still some indicators that we had noted were not necessarily achieved. Um, um, and these are basic um, or indicators that relates to, to key basic uh, services, the issue on social housing, access to sanitation, and when we're looking at the total water losses and electricity losses within the city. There were still other um, an assessment that we done as it related to the, um, in the basic service indicators as per Secular 88, where we are noting the city had not necessarily included all, but it is due to the phase in approach that the city has um, um, decided to follow in implementing and reporting on the Secular 88 indicators and that we have assessed, but there, there were still a few indicators that were not then being reported in the main um, performance report of the city. As, as also highlighted, we did also cover um, um, key projects to have a, a reflection on how the city is doing as it related to how they are managing the, the key um, um, projects. And we looked at the key projects that are relating to the basic services and the key issues that we're highlighting from the water project, the housing project, the, um, the, the wastewater treatment projects. Um, there was an issue around inadequate uh, procurement, as, sorry, inadequate contract, as well as performance uh, monitoring and management of the service providers, the contracts themselves, in terms of the values of those re um, relevant um, 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 projects and how much has been approved. We had also noted delays in terms of completing some of these projects. Um, the main one, there is one on the housing as well as the electricity. Those are some of the key where we are noting the delays in those projects. Um, Chair, overall as well, as it related to the to the to the um, key project and it's linked to the basic or key performance indicators on basic service um, related um, um, matters. We did see that overall the city had um, reduced the overall performance um, that it was performing or had achieved only fifty eight percent as compared to the sixty six percent in the prior years. Um, Chair, in getting to these. Um, key performance indicators we do we had appreciated the process that the city had followed in terms of ensuring that they have an a robust or um, a, a a detailed public participation process um, where they then had identified which are then the key areas that the communities were concerned about. We did note that it was more in the areas of housing, provision of sanitation, waste management, electricity and water. And as indicated, Chair, we then ensured that when we are testing or auditing then their uh, performance, we ensure we cover these key basic services chain. And we did note then that there were some indicators where then the, the city had not necessarily um, achieved um, their planned targets um, um, on the issues of access to sanitation, the issue of social housing care, um, as well as some of the water losses and other um, um, 
um, connections as it related to um, the water as well as the storm, um, the roads and storm water constructions. Yeah? So there they did have some targets which they were not then able to meet. Um, the other one that we looked at uh, related to on the sanitation, um, um, we looked at the issue around the chemical toilets. With this one, Chair, we were not happy with the, 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 the maintenance of some of them, those chemical toilets that were then provided to, to the citizens um, and, and how the city is basically ensuring then that the contractors or the service providers are then adhering to the agreed upon um, um, contract conditions as well as the, the, the specifications that were indicated when the city was awarding the, 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 the related contracts to. So the next one is highlighted by my colleague is a summary of then the movement and the unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Also for the city chair, we are noting increasing um, balances as well as some of the amounts that are being incurred as well, chair. There's still um, issues that are then still being identified and increasing this balance. And the processes in dealing with these balances, chair, we are also noting some delays in terms of finalizing then the related um, the related investigations um, on the on the identified um, 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 irregular, fruitless, and wasteful from the previous um, financial years, Chair. Um, we did note that there are some that would have been written off following investigations. However, the pace, Chair, is still a bit slower than um, we had anticipated. And some of these then delays are then also delaying the relevant pro uh, consequence and con um, consequence management related processes that needs to be undertaken on then the, the, the issues that would have been investigated, Chair. So this is then also on the funding model. Well, we the, the funding model is largely the same um, for, 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 for the city as well. Um, it does depend on the loans um, and, and bonds and grants as well as the own revenue that they 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 generate. Um, in the in the past year, Chair, we did note that there was a, an, an increase in terms of the loan borrowings that the, the city had undertaken. Um, we also noted, Chair, that there is a positive outlook in terms of the uh, rating by Moody's for the city, um, where the city did get a reviewed rating, um, which was having a positive outlook or a more stable outlook in terms of the city. But they did still highlight some issues around uh, still the financial constraint that the city has, because overall, Chair, the financial health of the city, we still are noting some concerns um, as it relates to um, when we consider some of their key um, key um, um, ratios. Um, Chair, with that, then there is also a, a, a challenge that we are noting that the city is facing in terms of um, the own revenue related collection targets. They are still not meeting those. They do have a revenue uh, recovery or financial recovery plan, um, as well as the rev revenue collection strategy, Chair, but the, the e effectiveness of those we are not noting because overall the, the financial health as well as the revenue collection targets of the of the of the city is still remaining a concern from from our side chair um chair we also did note in terms of their spending that they did have an over expenditure um, expenditure on their capex um the capital related expenditure um due to some of their housing projects chair and this has um added on their uh, unauthorized expenditure in the current year um, also, Chair, with regards to the infrastructure, we are concerned that the repairs and maintenance spending um, on their key infrastructures for the city chair is still below the expected um, spending and budgeting for, for, for their key um, infrastructure. We are noting that it's sitting at 2%, and in terms of the uh, guidelines, it's supposed to be uh, at 8 or above, um, Chair. So this does then um, um, may impact the, 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 the current infrastructure negatively, Chair, and may, this may also have an impact on the revenue that the city needs to be um, um, improving on and, and, and the revenue that it could be earning in terms of the, the services that they would be providing through those key um, infrastructure chair. 
Sure, the next one is just a summary on the information system um, assessment. Um, we do still have some IT governance concerns that we are noting within the environment um, that we have highlighted to management as well as just the alignment of their systems in terms of the, 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 the strategy um, that the city has um, 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 uh, revised um, with the new administration um, of, from the last um, um, elections chair. So with that, we had noted some, some issues around the, the alignment between the IT strategy as well as the, the, the new strategy that the city is embarking on. Um, Overall, Chair, there has not been any significant concerns on IT, IT threatening the business continuity of the, of the city. Um, however, we, with the concerns that we've highlighted, we had identified an issue around how the city is utilizing their software licenses and had raised an, an, a material irregularity in that, in, in that matter. And it is part of the items that are contributing to the level of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure in the current year. In terms of the lived realities, um, the, we had also assessed um, how the city is basically utilizing the free basic service that is supposed to be passing to the to the indigent. Um, so, um, and we have some concerns that we had then noted um, where the city is not adequately passing through the the benefit that they do receive from the national treasury as it relates to their indigents, meaning there are some citizens within the city that are supposed to be benefiting, but have not necessarily benefited chair. But there is a process or a policy that the city has um, that they are applying for the different indigents, but it's still not assisting in ensuring that the benefit it gets to be passed chair to the um, number that they get funded through the, the national treasury and through the equitable share that gets to be allocated chair. In terms of uh, um, transversal root causes and some of the recommendations, as highlighted, the issues around consequence management remains a concern. We had noted instability on key positions. I think that the key two that we had noted here was on the issue of the uh, city manager, but that has since been um, addressed. So we are highlighting that there are still some key senior management um, vacancies that still needs to be uh, filled and need to then, um, that process needs to be uh, uh, speed up so that they, they can then start implementing um, the, the, the key uh, action plans that they've developed. On the action plans, Chair, what we've picked up is that there is a plan that is um, um, developed with then key preventative controls uh, being implemented. However, they still the effectiveness of those um, action plans and uh, it's still not achieving or assisting them to eliminate some of the issues that we are still picking up from the audit process and then as well as then the consequence management around then the failure of then implementing some of the action plans that they have and where there are issues around then um, um, matters from the audit and there has been an action plan that was uh, developed and a preventative control that it then failed to uh, pick up the issue that we identified through the, the, the audit and what then happens after um, there's been such an issue identified. So those are some of the concerns that we've, we've, we've noted here. Uh, this, uh, as my colleague has also indicated, these are some of the, the, the issues we have as part of then the accountability ecosystem within the city of Jobek. Um, we are highlighting the different uh, role players and what they had not necessarily done to ensure that at least the city is improving and starting to, to, to address these issues that have been recurring over the years. As highlighted overall, the outcome remains stagnant. Chair. This is then a summary of the current material irregularities that we've identified within the environment. All of the material irregularities within the city chair relate to matters um, where payments have been made, um, have not been made on time or have been made in vain, and the related goods or services were not necessarily received by the city. And this has been identified over the period of implementation of the material irregularity. And there is three that we've assessed as being appropriate. And we are still tracking in terms of um, ensuring that all of the steps are identified to deal with the issue. 
applicants to be effectively implemented and appropriately implemented. Chair, there is one that we are on, on the IT is highlighted in terms of those licenses where it is still um, um, in, in being evaluated following the receipt of the accounting officer's response, Chair. Chair, thank you. I, I see I did um, exceed my time a bit. Um, just apologies on that, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I heard you making a remark that the first presentation was long and you'll be much shorter. I'll never believe you. It's more than the same, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's you. take the, the last one, please. M. Fuleni. So far, so good, I think so. Uh, good uh, morning, Chair, honorable members. I hope everybody is well. Um, I'm just going to wrap up the last uh, municipality, the local municipality in Fuleni. Uh, Chair, just let me know again if the screen is visible and I'm audible. You're okay. You're audible. It's okay. Thank, thank you. It? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. So, um, Chairperson, I'm going to go uh, as my colleagues through the, the slides, but I'll just share the specifics for Infolani that are not covered in the other uh, other colleagues' presentation as well. So with Infolani, Chair, um, just to go through the audit outcomes itself, um, our audit outcome analysis for the for the period, uh, the three areas we audit, financial statements, compliance, and performance information. We found a municipality in the current year that was financially qualified. Uh, we had one matter on the qualification relating to general expenditure. It was a regression from the prior year. So we're sitting with a mixed bag. It went into qualification in 1920. It then improved a bit, and then it regressed again in the current year. So we do find a municipality that we are struggling to get credible financial statements for audit purposes. We had a number of material misstatements that were corrected as a result of the audit process. And then there was one matter that was unfortunately couldn't be corrected that resulted in the qualification matter as well. So then to move on to the compliance areas, we noted a repetition of compliance matters identified in the prior, the five big areas that are there, are the procurement and contract management, the consequence management, the prevention of UIFW, expenditure management, and then the financial statements quality as well. We're seeing an overall stagnation here on this um, particular municipality. There is a failure to implement sound internal controls uh, addressing the prior findings as well as coming up with credible action plans to address those so they don't recur uh, over the next financial year as well. I think secondly, as well on compliance, we're finding that the root causes for these are a lack of consequent management. We've seen uh, instances of unauthorized, irregular, and footless and wasteful expenditure. Those balances continue to grow year on year, and we're not seeing the appropriate uh, investigations being actioned and completed. And then the next step being the remedial action uh, and the uh, the consequent management around that as well. So we are seeing a municipality that is uh, stagnating in these areas and require intervention on the compliance as well. Then on the service delivery, which is the performance information, uh, we are still remaining stagnant with qualified opinions on our area that we selected for audit. We noted that this municipality does not keep good uh, performance information uh, POEs, that is your portfolio of evidence. We're then finding that we're having issues when we're testing the reliability uh, and the usefulness of this information. Uh, in certain instances, we find that they are materially different than what is recorded. And in other instances, we are unable to confirm the actual achievements as well. We do also then uh, have an issue where the targets that they were planning to achieve was only 46% throughout the entire performance information cycle. So we're having less than a half of these achievements that are there, that uh, the targets that are there that have been achieved as well. Okay, to move on to uh, the key deliveries. So this is just the standard again, this is specific to Infoleni. Uh, and just overall reflections on the, on the five programs that are key for their service delivery. The basic service and infrastructure one is the one that is uh, the one that links directly to the citizens on the ground and how they are impacting them as well. Without a proper uh, proper record management system, as well as uh, the collection, verification, storing, and reporting of the actual performance, the AG uh, himself was unable to confirm that these systems and processes were effective, and hence we had to qualify the program that we audited as well. So it is to do with basically your indicated definitions, how are you budgeting for these processes, your targets, and then the achievements that are related to these targets were not uh, either measurable, useful, or reliable as well. 
Yeah, specifically on the local municipality in Kulani, we visited the, the key projects. Our focus in the current year was on waste water treatment plants, the sanitation and the water management processes as well. So the key uh, projects, again, were the wastewater treatment plants. There were three that we visited in the current year uh, in terms of just trying to uh, figure out the physical condition, the operational management processes uh, as well for treatment and monitoring as well as the prevention of pollution and navigation. Uh, this particular wastewater treatment plant does fit into the old Pal River Barrage area, and we were just concerned about how is that environmental risk in there as well. So some of the key findings uh, uh, chair on this one was the, the state of the infrastructure. It is dilapidated uh, in most of the sites. Uh, there are no safeguarding and maintenance that is happening. So we have instances over time that these wastewater treatments have been malfunctioning. Uh, together with the theft and vandalism that is there, uh, it's not operating as intended as well. So the result of these are significant pollution and degradation of the environment, and then the affluent that is spilling into the, the river is also polluted as well. So the three areas that we did identify was the environmental risk, um, the wastewater quality and compliance monitoring, as well as the processes for prevention of pollution. So those are three critical areas that is affecting the municipality from an environmental point of view. Uh, then quickly on a, a matter to uplift specifically for Infuleni, we are seeing this municipality is in financial distress. When we do report on the audit, we, we refer to it as a meet material uncertainty and the going concern principle being affected. So we are saying that if it was in the normal sense of the business, this municipality may not be able to uh, attend to all its operational requirements because of the state of the financial health. So just a reflection on that as well. Uh, we have the equitable share and grants that are coming in. However, we're having our own revenue that was built, which is up to 1.2 billion. Uh, however, about 86% of that uh, revenue is not uh, recovered by the municipality. So we have a debt impairment process that happens, and then we are unable to collect the debt as well. We do have uh, a debt collection period of greater than 120 days. There is a failure in terms of the municipality to collect all its debt at its due as well. What is also crippling this municipality specifically is a large amount of trade payables, specifically on two uh, supplies, which is your ESCOM and RAN water. As of the year end uh, that we completed auditing, there was about 6.7 billion RAN worth of um, money that is owing to ESCOM uh, and RAN water combined. We did see in the media, and you'll be aware that in, in some instances, these, these accounts were attached by, the, uh, by ESCOM. So they were attaching on the bank account as well as some of the assets as well at the municipality. So we did have, at the end of the day, the operational requirements that were supposed to be there were not made. And it did also then impact the community from a service delivery uh, point of view. Then on the expenditure side, uh, Chair, we have salaries and wages, which is a big bill. It represents about 66% of the estimated recover revenue. And we did identify about 1.7 billion rand of cryptos and wasteful expenditure. Again, because of the financial health situation, we're seeing that the credit payment period is a bit outrageous. It's, I think, about 531 days, which is the average time it then takes to pay a creditor at the municipality. As a result, Chair, of the dilapidation of the wastewater treatment plant and the infrastructure, we are incurring a lot of water losses. So we're seeing, in terms of rand value, in the current year, about 733 million rand worth of water losses at the municipality as well. So to date, uh, both the structural economic challenges and the financial uh, distress has affected this municipality. And there we're saying there are a lot of material uncertainties resulting from either the position, the performance and the cash flows then of the municipality. So just on the impact itself, I'll chair quickly, the municipality didn't, did end the year in a deficit. We are gonna be using next year's budget to pay for current year expenditure. In terms of the budgeting process as well, they are one of the municipalities that had unfunded budgets and it was the cautionary letters that were issued by Treasury as well. We do then have the, the cycle of unauthorized, which is overspending on the budget. It's now totaling about 7.5 billion. It's a mixture of the cash and the non-cash items. So as a result of these matters on the financial health share, we're having insufficient funding to complete projects and an effect good service delivery. We do have a financial recovery plan at place at, uh, in Kuleni. However, we are not seeing good progress in terms of that. 
There is also intervention and support that is coming from both province, uh, Kauten province, provincial government, that's the local treasury, as well as the local uh, cocktail as well. Uh, however, I think those those matters uh, obviously are sometimes beyond uh, what the support is as well. So we are struggling then in terms of what the numbers show and the impact as well. Share just to update another issue on IT. So this one is a bit a bit serious than the other two colleagues as well. So we're having a state of this repair at the IT and the information control environment at the uh, Inkoleni. We do have key findings both on the governance, so the governance structures that should be in place are not there. And then on the controls itself, we're having issues with the municipality accounting for its financial information in a secure environment by making sure that the IT systems that are there are able to give us information when there's downtime, they're able to have backups in place and then recovery if there's what to be uh, uh, constructive in terms of the lights that are going out all the time over there as well. Again, something on the IT security is the security patches, which is important in order to prevent any threats and penetrations into the system. We're finding that those are not in place and there's uh, significant weaknesses then thereafter in the IT environment. I think all in all, just to indicate that this is just an indication that this municipality is in, is in showing an increased cybersecurity risk as well. The key recommendations, I just want to leave uh, members with as well. So these are some of the things that we picked up in the environment and we're saying they need to be uh, put in place in order for this municipality to improve. I think firstly, the section 46, 47 vacancies are quite high. They're about, uh, if I just remember, the figure collected about 40 to 40 percent. So we need to fill those key vacancies as well. We then need to strengthen our financial statements, uh, including the laws and regulations and monitoring of those policies and procedures identification of the root causes that need to give rise to credible action plans, as well as recommendations that come from both external audit, internal audit of the audit committee, as well as those charge of governance that need to be implemented as well. The performance information, uh, which is all that is in the service delivery mandate, also usefulness and reliability of those uh, processes need to be improved on. I think this whole thing is governed by the risk management processes. We see it lacking very, very, very poorly at the municipality, so we don't have proper risk and risk mitigation processes. I think with my assessment over the last week, we've just recently appointed a chief risk officer at the municipality. So hopefully they'll be starting the process of identifying risk, mitigating them and putting our processes in place as well. But yeah, these are just the commitments then from the prior year. So we see a mixed bag of not implemented and in progress in terms of what the municipality has committed to in the, in the prior year, as well as those issues that are still largely uh, in progress or haven't started as yet as well. So they are related then to our messaging on the AFS, the performance, the compliance, the vacancy that I talked about, and then the MI process, which is the material irregularity processes. Chair, in, at this municipality, we have three MIs uh, that are currently in process or so have been through the system of being uh, notified. We do see two of them that the evaluation and recommendation processes are happen, happening. One is then taking the appropriate action uh, by the accounting officer. Then the environmental ones that are, are there in terms of my assessment on pollution, those are in progress and will be then also in the process of being issued to the municipality uh, soon as well. Chair, then just a quick one on the liberalities in this area. So the area of Infoliani, we are seeing what we just mentioned in terms of the findings that are impacting the citizens. So because of these issues on the wastewater treatment plants, uh, the financial health, as well as the general uh, lack of control in the environment, we're seeing a community that is uh, almost bearing the brunt. So things like the river is polluted, the sewage uh, stores on the streets, as well as the lack of maintenance over the roads as well. So those things have created almost to say a mini state of disaster in the area. And we do then urge this municipality to put in processes in place, be it interventions between uh, the local as well as national interventions as well. Chair, that's my, my messaging on Inkoleni. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for all the presentations. Uh, and I want to take this opportunity to really say that these were clear cut presentations, which are quite understandable. And I hope that this has helped members to understand more about the situation. Even some of the issues are quite depressing, uh, of great concern that I think members will deal with. 
Can I then take this opportunity to open floor for discussions, comments, uh, questions uh, in that way, based on the three presentations? You can choose any municipality of your choice, or if you want to ask questions across the municipalities, you, you are at liberty to do so. Over to you, honorable members. I note honorable Smith, followed by honorable Sheikh. Let me take the, the first two hands, then I'll take others uh, with time. Over to you, honorable Smith. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. My apology, they are busy working outside of my house. <laughs> I hope I'm clear. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Chair, I'm going to start with Tswane. There's a few uh, questions that I want in terms of clarity because... Um, I want to understand how we get to, you know, to the situations that we are. Um, if you if you get to the core of problems, you know, it helps to actually address the problems. Um, so my first uh, question in, in terms of, of Tswani and, and, you know, and I think that goes all over the, uh, uh, the board in terms of municipal uh, municipalities and they're reporting to the Auditor General through financial statements and so forth, is um, I want to hear from the Auditor General, you know, is there actually opportunities for officials in municipalities to manipulate, uh, you know, the outcomes of, of audit reports through manipulation of, of documentation that they submit? Um, and, and was such picked up before? Um, because um, I have heard of cases, you know, where where municipalities or officials were were hiding certain things, and then uh, you know later when when new administrations come in, then then different uh, uh, facts come out, and then then it is exposed, you know, with a new administration. The second thing I want to know is. Um, if that is the case, that it can be manipulated in a way, how can we improve, um, you know, in, in that in curbing such such practice to to you know to avoid that 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 happen as much as possible? I know it is not you know it's like tax and everything else you know that you can't, can't control everything, but is there maybe a way or you know, some advice from the Auditor General on how we can improve in curbing such practice. Um, and then um, I want to know in terms of the um, administration that took place uh, in Tswani, uh, which was actually uh, uh, said by the court that it was illegal administration. What impact did that administration have on the actual outcome that we see now in terms of the audit the report. And then um, was they picked up any deliberate uh, sabotage uh, or actions by the CFO um, that led to these um, uh, outcomes? Then I want to know in terms of M. Fuleni, um, firstly, uh, you know, Infulini was under administration and it's been lifted. So I want to know, did this administration actually improve the situation or deteriorate the situation? And then I want to understand why was the administration lifted as the situation is still deteriorating, as we can see. And then I also want to know, how do, we, how do we change the effectiveness of administration to actually improve the situation in municipalities like in Fuleni? Um, you know, because it's, it's, it's quite clear that it is not effective enough. And it's something that we as, as a committee is grappling with, uh, as, as we also mentioned, you know, in the start of our strategic planning, is how do we improve 
the section 139s, for example, uh, in making sure that it actually uh, does what it needs to do. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, thank you, Honorable Smith. Honorable Shay. Uh, thank you very much, Jefferson, and my apologies for not uh, turning on my camera. Uh, I think largely because uh, there's load shedding and my network is not very stable. Um, and I think I've tried to, I've indicated that to yourself as well um, uh, through, through, through the committee staff, but also on the WhatsApp group chat. Um, Chair, let me take this opportunity to also thank um, the AG's office uh, for the, the three uh, presentations um, and also appreciate the fact that I think it would be, it would be very helpful for us um, as we engage uh, the, um, the municipalities going, going forward. Um, Chair, I think the, the the, I would just go to specific questions because um, I think the presentations are, are relatively clear uh, in, in various aspects of information. Uh, but maybe just to say that I think with the, the Tuani uh, municipality, um, I think it's very disconcerting that uh, there's an adverse finding with that municipality and the fact that this is possibly the worst audit outcome uh, in the history of the municipality. Um, the fact that there's general regression, repeat issues, uh, material misstatements, um, uh, poor performance and targets, uh, et cetera, and, and also the high uh, irregular expenditure. Uh, Jim, my questions are just more specific around, around capacity issues. Um, the one with regard to, to the, the CFO, whether the AG's office is able to give us an indication in terms of how long the CFO was with that municipality, especially over the, 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 the past uh, three audits, um, as well as whether what is the capacity uh, within uh, the financial management uh, unit uh, of, of that municipality. Um, with regard to the UIFW and the lack, lack of consequence management, uh, in terms of the presentation, um, it's indicated that while MPAC is new, uh, they are functional, um, or they expect, or the AG's office expect the, the, the MPAC to be quite functional. I just want to know, just in terms of the support capacity to impact in that municipality or whether the AG's office is, can, can avail us with, with that type of information. Um, as well as with regard to the, the, the audit committee and the internal audit committees, well, yeah, how stable they are um, and, and uh, whether they have the necessary uh, support capacity. Um, Chair, with regard to that presentation as well and Tuane, um, on the one hand, um, the presentation indicates that um, the, with regard to the support uh, from province and national government, uh, on the one hand, the presentation does indicate that that support is inadequate in terms of turning around the finances of the city, but on the other hand, the presentation also indicates that the lack of capacity by, by managing uh, the lack of, uh, sorry, the lack of cooperation by the management of, of the municipality. And maybe if they can just also clarify that issue, uh, I think it will also assist us going forward um, when we engage with the municipality and, and the various uh, other support departments, the provincial COPTA as well as national. Um, with regard to the city of Janice, Chair, um, Okay, uh, the fact that uh, although it's an unqualified audit opinion, but finding the fact that it, there's a stagnant outcome is also um, a concern. Uh, but the, the increase in UIFW as well as the lack of consequence management, I think, Chair, once again, um, I would want to know with regard to, to impact uh, the support capacity to. Uh, with, with regard to the support capacity, 
uh, with also with regard to whether NPEC is actually addressing all of the issues uh, and whether the problem is more um, the that the, uh, the the municipality is not taking the decision around around uh, the APEC re recommendations. Um, Chair, and secondly, you know, with regard to the um, the CFO position, I, I know it's indicated that it's vacant, uh, but they also mentioned that there are high vacancies in the municipality. Uh, and whether they can elaborate on the capacity within the financial management unit, um, as well as vacancies in terms of, of internal audit. And finally, Chair, with, with uh, the situation in, in Mfuleni as well, uh, I think it's, it's, it's very uh, concerning. Um, the, the issue of uh, them having a deficit as well as working on an unfunded budget, but equally uh, disconcerting chair is the fact that the financial recovery plan is not um, being implemented. Um, and once again, I would also want to know uh, the capacity issues with regard to, to, to the financial management unit. What is not being said is whether there's a CFO in the municipality or not. Uh, whether MPEC is functional or not, uh, what, are the, what are the capacities in terms of internal audit and or whether the audit committee is functioning chair. I think those are just some of my, my comments as well as concerns. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Onawa Sheikh. Any other intervention? My hand is up, Chair. Yes, Onawa Samai. Uh, chair. I have a very serious problem with Mfuling. I'm staying in Mfuling. The municipal, I ask myself, who did leave an administration in Mfuling? Where there's no water uh, in the community, there are places, there are wards, more than six, seven wards, that they don't have electricity. I'm not talking about load shading. The municipality, there's no roads at municipality. I ask myself, who did uplift 139 in Fulin? There's bad. There's very, very bad. I think, Chairperson, an oversight visit needs to be take place, especially in Fulin, so that we can see with our own eyes how our people are living in Fulin. I can simply take you to Zone 10. It's booking just to see how people have been there for more than five years without electricity. I can take you to uh, uh, Marikani, where the people, they don't have water. They don't have electricity for more than 15 years. But they, I, I ask myself, why things are being happening like this? I'm feeling it's bad. You must go and see your, with your own eyes how people are suffering. There's no, there's no job opportunity there. There's nothing. There's no municipality. As when you go to the municipality, at the same time in municipality, they, may, they are listening to me. There's grass. There's grass. You can even see the place is very bad. You can't even say this is a municipality. Go to the municipality's office. You go to executive mayor's office and see what is inside. Is oh, that was Amai. Are you still there? Let, let's move to the next one. Oh, that was Don Gany. Thank you, Sam. I just have only one question for three municipalities. What is the plan they have run to rescue the situation? Because now we are in a bad situation. Is there any plan or anything they have done to correct the situation? Because it's more than three years. I'm not quite sure whether it's the right person in the right place. I'm not quite sure you're going to help me. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. 
Oh, no, Abu Musamai, are, are you still there? Honorable Musamai, are you still there? Honorable Musamai is not there. Uh, in the absence of Honorable Dongeri, can you mute your mic, please? Yes. In the absence of any other hand, I just want to make some few uh, reflections and, and questions. Firstly, starting with Twani. The situation in Twani is very much concerning. Take into account the fact that Twani is the capital city of this country. It is where things need to happen. It is where key important international and national institutions are based. And Swani ought to lead by example. And what is presented here is quite concerning. Now, my question is to the AG. The political instability in Swani, what is its impact in relation to the audit outcomes? How has that played itself and contributed to the current situation that, that we have currently? And linked to that, I just want you to remind this meeting when administration was imposed in 20, around 2020, how long was that? How long did it take the administration in charge of Tswane until that was nullified by, by the court of law. For me, that is quite important because we are going to deal with this issue throughout. The next question, it is a question that cuts across all the three presentations. Uh, why don't you give us the rents and cents of what you say. If you say there is irregular expenditure, there is fruitless expenditure, there is unauthorized expenditure and so on, why don't you tell us the trend thereof in terms of the years that were articulated and tell us this year, this is how much is your irregular expenditure, and this is how much was your unauthorized expenditure and so on and so forth. The last one in relation to a question that cuts across all the municipalities. Why don't you just in a very synoptic way share with us the situation with regard to the entities that are accountable or created by these three municipalities. For me, that is quite important so that you have a sense in terms of the role that was played by the council in overseeing all of these municipalities. Because in all these presentations, we're talking about the accountability ecosystem. We want to know how that is applicable in relation to the entities that are created by these municipalities or entities that account to these particular municipalities. For me, it's quite important to get a sense of the oversight role that these municipalities are playing in relation to these entities. I'm raising this point because there's been a lot of concerns, especially in Johannesburg with regard to the Johannesburg Road Agency as well as Johannesburg Water. And it is quite therefore important to get a sense about what is happening in relation to, 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 to all of this. But otherwise, the information is quite substantive uh, in relation to what is happening and what are these non-compliance areas that you have identified and what are the issues that you have identified that led to the situation that is obtained in these municipalities. I don't know whether should I say you 
you have a municipality or not, you have all of these problems, service delivery problems, roads, water, the spillages that at some point led to the intervention of the South African National Defense Force in that municipality. We, if you have information about what happened in relation to that, that can be very, very much important for, for, for the committee as the committee prepares uh, for its oversight visit. If, if Honorable Mosama is not aware, we will be there in Gauteng from the 13th of, 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 of this month until the 17th. It will be on a Monday until Friday. We will visit Johannesburg, we will visit Swale, and we will visit uh, M. as well to go and experience ourselves. But more than that, to engage with both the internal stakeholders and external stakeholders about this, the audit outcomes, plus the situation that is obtained in those particular municipalities. With that, can, I, can we get some, some responses uh, so that we take the issue forward? Or oh, I see the hand of uh, Honorable Ida Tetra. Uh, the platform mm -hmm. is yours before I allow the responses to the issues that were raised. Over to you. Yes, thanks very much, Chair. Uh, I, I'm sorry to speak after you because most of the time you wrap up with also on issues and to join the meeting late, Chair. Uh, we had our own constitutional review meeting that started at eight this morning. We just finished and I've joined your meeting towards the end of the presentation. But I want to ask you one thing, Chair, one and foremost. You know, there is a management report that normally comes first for all the municipality that identify these issues. How confidential it is that report that can be given to members? Because sometimes it assists to compare that management report and the response of what is the municipality doing, especially in some areas where you find that these matters has been raised in a number of times, but nothing is taking, is turning the corner. I wonder, particularly to municipalities that have come to this end, uh, that how possible it is, Chair, to get such a report for members just also to go and scrutiny. And I'm asking direct to the AG that they send it to the municipality. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Tato. Can I get uh, responses starting with uh, the Twani uh, submission? Over to you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I will deal with the Twani questions. I'm starting with um, the questions from Honorable Member Smith. Um, so in relation to manipulation of documents, um, I think in, in any environment, there is a possibility that documents can be manipulated to you know, give a particular incorrect reflection of affairs. Um, so, and so, 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 so what I would say is that, I mean, even a Tswane environment um, would not necessarily be, be safe from that possibility. I think in terms of the audit process or the process uh, for the 2021-22 cycle, I think uh, we, we didn't pick up any specific instances of manipulation of documents. Um, um, so, so, so in the Tswane environment, we, we have not picked it up in the previous audit cycle. Um, not sure about the other audit cycle, but I think uh, as far as my own connection, uh, we haven't picked up such instances in the, in the, in the audit. Um, and then in relation to then how, because obviously um, manipulation of documents would, in, would, would involve collusion 
by certain officials within the city. And obviously, if it is happening, um, how, how then could, could this be curbed? I think first and foremost, uh, you know, if, if the tone at the top is not right in that such activities, um, there's no strong tone against them, then you, you, you would find that such instances would be more prevalent than, than in other areas. So I think first and foremost is to just fix the tone at the top. Um, enforcement of the code of conduct, enforcement of consequences in relation to transgression, enforcement of, 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 of consequences in relation to um, in relation to holding people accountable, um, especially in instances of misconduct. Um, and also, um, ap apart from that, I mean, um, also the, the, the aspect of internal audit, because internal audit as, an, as, as, a, as a structure within the internal control um, life cycle, their key role is to monitor the effectiveness of controls within the environment. And I think um, also if they are adequately capacitated because obviously their efforts would be risk-based and if there are instances of, 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 of such um, an activity, assuming those instances would be picked up through the risks that they would have picked up in the environment, those risks then would then be put in their plan and they would be able to do specific work in terms of monitoring if such activities exist and, and bring, bring forth findings. If, if 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 they are there, but also I think I think as as a basic operational <clears throat> uh, control um, for such instances, it, the, the the municipality or any environment would need to focus on implementing preventative controls, controls that would prevent even such instances from being you know, uh, possible in the environment. And, and, and I think if, if more focus is on preventative controls, ideally you would see very little to none of such instances in the environment. And then in relation to the impact of the administration of, uh, or, or on the outcome at, at Swane, uh, I think um, if, if, if you look at the, the administration period, and the periods after that, I think what, what is noticeable is are the instabilities in the environment. And with, with, with those instabilities, I think uh, we can't really say there was a direct link of that administrative period to the outcome. But definitely in terms of you know, the instabilities that arose during that time and, and, and the periods after, these are instabilities contributed in, in relation to you know, the worsening control environment in, 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 in the city. Um, and then in relation to deliberate action by the CFO that has led to, to the outcome, I think, um, Honorable Chair, I, I cannot pin down any specific deliberate action that I can say, um, you know, the, 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 the CFO did this deliberately to get a particular outcome. I think it's more um, non-action than, than action, you know, because I think had he acted in, in maybe had done certain actions um, such as, you know, um, his role in relation to the control environment, his role in, in, in the context of, you know, intent in addressing the issues, um, his role in relation to ensuring that, you know, financial statements are of the right quality. I think, I think the inadequacy of his action in relation to that would have been more a contributor to the outcomes than a specific action, you know, um, that he would have done, you know, to get to these outcomes. Um, um, and I'll, I'll speak to the audit committee, partly in, in relation on the quality of financial statements when I respond to um, Honorable um, Sheikh's uh, questions. 
Um, so with those questions, there was the question on the capacity issues. How long was the CFO there? Uh, per our knowledge, um, honorable member, the CFO was there for the tenure of his contract. So, and then, and obviously his contract was extended for a couple of months more. So um, one would say minimum five years, because that would be the, 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 the general duration of a contract of, of a CFO in the public sector or in that environment. So, so he was there in the environment for, for at least uh, five years. Um, and speaking to the capacity in finance, uh, I think for, for, the, for the size of the municipality and looking at just the headcount of the finance unit, I think the headcount is quite thin. And, and, and I think the public sector and particularly metros and particularly the municipality space, I mean, yes, one can assume it's simple, but there's quite a lot that goes into really accounting for the finances uh, within, you know, a municipality and the metro is even, is even uh, much worse. And, and I would believe that there would be even other complexities um, that would need to, 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 to be accounted for in a specific manner. So I think um, when you look at the capacity within finance, it's, it's quite thin. And I think looking at the issues as well, we, we could say to, to, to an extent, even the, the, the skill set, you know, um, that were, you know, uh, put in place for, for this critical, you know, activity, you know, of preparing financial statements was 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 quite um, uh, the skill set was 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 quite uh, uh, how can I put, inadequate maybe if I can put it that way so 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 and 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 yes and I think looking at at, at Swane, um the finance uh, unit or, or is it the it's more of a centralized function. As opposed to, you know, each each or maybe let let me say department having its own finance, you know, complement whether it be an accountant or whatsoever. So when you have such a big institution and centralizing finance in the manner that is in in in, in Tswane, either you have to have this a, a very strong capacity because you you are you you are dealing with 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 activities from different you know, inputs. And um, if, you, if you continue with that centralized, you need to really have a very strong capacity. And I think Swana particularly, um, it, 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 has been, it has been thinning, particularly even over the, the previous couple of years. And then in relation to MPEG support, um, um, I think in the past year, um, I wouldn't, have the specifics in terms of, of, of the extent. And, and obviously, as I said, uh, um, our assessment was that, you know, the MPEC uh, committee is quite um, fairly new to the environment. And, and um, but I think with the engagements that we've had with them, I think we have noticed some support coming through uh, from the intergovernmental you know, um, um, departments coming through and, and trying to provide support in terms of presenting on how, what the responsibilities, what their responsibilities and, and how effective can they discharge their responsibilities. So I think with that capacitation, obviously with us also, you know, uh, playing our role as well to capacitate, you know, um, MPEC uh, with the know-how and the insights that they need, you know, to be effective in, in their oversight, uh, I would believe you know, um, with what I've seen, obviously, during this period of, of this particular phase of, of, of the adverse outcome, I've seen there being, you know, um, quite a, a number of engagements with, with MPEC to that effect. So I would believe that support is, is being there in the environment, and, and one would hope that um, it would continue to increase, taking into account the issues in the municipality. And then in relation to audit committee and internal audit, I think 
internal audit plays quite a significant role in terms of the effectiveness of oversight of the audit committee because they are the key monitoring activity of the audit committee as to whether controls are effective or not. So if you have instabilities in internal audit or even shortages in relation to budget, then um, <clears throat> then you obviously those would, would have uh, an impact in terms of the effectiveness of oversight overall um, of, of, of the, of the um, um, audit committee. But definitely, I think one of the, 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 the key issues that we noticed uh, is that the, the, there was quite a number of instabilities, particularly in the internal audit unit and, and, and the number of vacancies as well in, in the unit, uh, resulting in some of the, the, the activities such as investigation and so forth, not being able to be you know, um, executed by, by the unit and, and, and obviously taking into account the role that they play. So definitely, um, there, there is significant instabilities in, in, in that unit. And, and, and um, the, the audit committee um, obviously would be impacted um, um, by this, but, but also just to mention that um, um, the, the issue of submission of financial statements um, was something that was tracked quite closely by the audit committee in the month leading up to you know, the deadline. And, and one of the recommendations was that based on eventually the financial statements reached the audit committee, I think in one of the letter meetings. Um, and, and, and I think one of the things that even the audit committee picked up was that the, the quality of the financial statements was quite poor. And one of the recommendations was that, um, you know, maybe the, 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 the city is not ready to make the submissions but, but obviously it was a recommendation and, and obviously the CFO um, would have been taking into account um, all the, the, whatever that is within his purview would have taken the call that he took, um, which speaks to, to also the aspect partly of, of the lack of cooperation that um, was asked on, you know, um, as to what, what does that mean? Um, and, and I mean, we, we have sat in a number of audit committee sessions. But I mean, some of the questions and um, representations that would have been required by the audit committee were relevant in relation to the issues and the risks that were there in the environment. Um, I think what we were not seeing coming through timelessly and, and, and um, obviously within, you know, uh, or maybe let me say timelessly, or timeless responses to that, and also timeless responses in terms of putting uh, mitigations for the issue that we have picked up uh, was not forthcoming, and 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 I think that that speaks to also you know lack of cooperation because ideally, if management would have monitored the action plan effectively, would have taken all the insights that are coming from all the stakeholders um, that are you know, involved in this accountability ecocycle, uh, ecosystem. Um, ideally, we would have, not saying that the adverse would not be there, but ideally maybe we would have seen a lot lesser or fewer issues than, than, than what um, the issues are there. Um, and then in relation uh, to the plan to correct the situation, um, I think may, maybe the, the city might be in the best position to, to obviously answer this particular question. But obviously, we've engaged, you know, the, the city um, a couple of times in relation to obviously, you know, key recommendations on how, you know, um, or what um, we recommend um, should be considered by the accounting officer and his team in addressing the, 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 the issues. And, and, and the assumption would be that the accounting officer would take those into account in crafting the action plan that he would want to put in place to deal with these issues. And um, um, I know that the action plan was currently being crafted in terms of whether it's complete or not. Well, we don't know that yet. Um, I think um, the final action plan has not been you know, um, we have not had sight of the final action plan, but yeah, I guess maybe then the municipality might be in, in, in a better situation than to, to deal with that. 
and um and then maybe maybe i can ask um our colleagues to to maybe touch on the political instability and and its impact um maybe i'll talk to 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 how long the administration was in place i think the administration was not in place for for long i think based on the information that i have um i think it was about less than a year or a year or so so it was not really for 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 long and then obviously um with the court ruling uh, then obviously there was an acting you know accounting officer since um obviously leading up to the permanent appointment in the current um financial year and then um in relation then to the entities and the oversight over these entities i think when you i think for 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 twane particularly um the entities uh, of twane um their size uh, it's, it's not that they are not such big entities but apart from that i think also when you look at you know um you know their environments and you know things like controls within their environments i think it's it's not it's not as bad it's it's much better than than the city and and i think you know the um, i mean when you look at the issues both had unqualified yes there are some instances of 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 non compliance material non compliance that we identified and and some issues in relation to performance information and i mean if you look at consequence management they don't have as much you know um transgressions or irregular expenditure as the city but i think we have seen that some of the instances of um irregular fruitless and wasteful have been addressed by the the, the entities and, and obviously these entities are also being overseen by the audit committee but uh, i think maybe in in relation to 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 the entities you know um i think the situation is much more better um and then obviously it's, it's as a result of a combination of you know the boards that are in the in the entities as well as you know the role that is played uh, to a certain extent by the oversight structures such as the audit committee and then i think on the last question on the management report and the provision of of the report to the committee um obviously the management report is is is, is i think in its nature it's an internal document um i have seen instances where the ogt provides this report to the oversight committees when requested um i think uh, with with that uh, because even if you ask from the office um, um the, the the municipality would need to engage but i think in terms of provision of the report uh it shouldn't be a problem if if uh, if 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 the committee requests such from the municipality um so i think with that uh, i don't have many examples of instances where such was not provided on on request i think for, for myself um and then and, and then yeah and then i think um i've addressed majority of the questions and maybe if i can ask um maybe uh cz or 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 mr kabakulu to to maybe assist then with the political instability question and and its impact on the audit outcome thank you chair uh, thank you uh, quick response on that please um thank you so much uh, chairperson uh, this is mr mr kabakulu um th thank you for the questions um chair and honorable members the, the instability at at Tuane, um and we've been um observing it for for a number of years um, as Tolani has, has articulated and and what we've located it in, into in terms of the impact on the audit outcomes would be um in a sense of some of the work that the council has to to discharge uh, be it in terms of the investigation or regular expenditure, because often when there's a new council or the new leadership, <clears throat> the committees 
then have to be reconstituted again. So that's number one. Then you see that as it relates to issues of consequence management, the overall leadership in the municipality itself as it relates to service delivery aspects in terms of the different committees that ought to exist at the council. That's where we have seen uh, the impact of having such instability. That then also affects the long-term view in terms of where the city is going, uh, because often the focus on projects uh, tends to differ uh, or to change depending on the new leadership and what is it that the new leadership uh, will prioritize uh, at that point in time. So typically, uh, that's what we could attribute uh, to the issues of instability at the council. So really cutting across the work of the oversight committees, um, the work of the governance committees, the work of the administrators themselves in terms of them being held accountable um, as to what is it that would have committed uh, themselves to do. And what is it that the Auditor General is in office uh, would have raised uh, relating to Seats of Tuane? And broadly speaking, um, also affecting Seats of Tobek, because even the Seats of Tobek, uh, we have had instances of instability. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I will invite Mr. Mouloui uh, to then respond on the Seats of Tobek ones, as well as uh, Mr. Fenkentami uh, to talk to the issues of him. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Joe Beck, quick one. Thank you, Chair, um, Honorable Chair. I will just touch then on the issues relating to the city of Joe Beck. I think um, mostly came from the Honorable Member Sheikh um, regarding the concerns on the stagnation. Um, with regards to the stagnation as highlighted, it is a matter as well that we have highlighted as a concern because the city has been um, sitting in that um, unqualified with findings space for a while. And we have reassessed and, and raised concern on then the effectiveness of the um, action plans that they do develop um, um, year in, year out um, to deal with these issues, as well as the related oversight that needs to be undertaken by the different role players within the, the accountability ecosystem um, to then ensure that they can revise that and just ensure it moves to a space where there will be comfort in terms of adequate implementation of any plans that the city has to, to change the situation and where there is failure to implement that there is then that timely implementation of any consequence related um, 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 processes that needs to be undertaken for those um, departments then that are found to be wanting in trying to then address some of the issues that um, have been identified. Um, Yes, there, there has been that increase in the UIF, um, uh, but the role of MPEC as it relates to its capacity, we had not raised any concerns with the capacity of MPEC. Um, we did only note some of the changes posed to the uh, financial year end that we are assessing, but then for the year under review, we had not noted any concerns around the capacity, but it was more around the committees ensuring that whatever resolutions that are taken and needs to be implemented by the by the city manager that the, the oversight that they provide around that is effective and it's adequate in terms of changing the the situation and the concern around the the, the investigations that are still not yet commenced um, we are seeing that there are those that are then were undertaken and the, the committee was overseeing then the implementations of the relevant recommendations and recoveries of any funds where this has been identified as a, as a, as a, as a option for the city to also undertake but as it relates to the other balance it still remains very high in terms of the overall uh, matters that they need to deal with as, as indicated even in the year under review we have seen an increase in then the, 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 the irregular expenditure is fruitless as well as the un unauthorized. On the role of the CFO, there has been acti an acting CFO um, for the year and uh, uh, post year end, because the previous CFO left in, the, at the, in June um, at the end of the, the year that we were auditing. So there was an acting CFO. 
that then assisted in terms of then the ensuring that the, the audit process, um, the submission of the financials happens on time, the preparation of that, as well as just ensuring that the audit as well is um, um, undertaken and um, we are assisted with the process and then that we are reporting on time. So there was an acting CFO. Um, from the recent updates, we are aware that the, the, the process is still in progress. It was started from um, um, in the first quarter of this current financial year. So we have been following up on a, on a monthly basis just to check where the, um, 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 the process is so that is being addressed. So there was that acting group CFO. Um, overall, overall, in terms of the finance unit, as compared to the colleagues in Tuane for the city of Jobek, it is segregated in the sense that in the different departments, we do have finance um, heads or financial um, officials that are assisting then the different units within the city with their finance related matters. And then there is a, a central then um, team for finance that then oversees the different departments and all report then to the group CFO. The, the current vacancy rate we had noted was about 7% as at the end of June. Um, for the internal audit as well, there is some high vacancy rate. I think because we take into account the vacancy rate for that in 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 the in the other units um, when we assess it, um, we do not have a, like a separate one currently chair on the on the internal audit on its own. But we had noted that they do have high um, vacancies as well um, within that unit itself, and this has also resulted in some delays in some of the, the, the reports that they needed to finalize, um, as well as um, them then tracking the implementation of some of the recommendations that they have um, uh, made on those uh, investigations that undertaken, as well as their control environment assessments that they had done. So we had noted just a bit of delays in terms of then the management having to implement those recommendations coming to them. Um, I think in terms of the other questions um, in, that affects the CT, um, in terms of the information, in terms of rents, I think it is something that we can make available. Uh, Chair, it is also included in the in the financial statements, which it does then detail or break down. If there's any other detail, Chair, I think from our side, it's the same information that we have, and we can, I think, share with that um, through the relevant processes. Um, I think a similar chair with the with the situation um, or the picture of the entities. Um, I think overall we are noting a similar picture um, with pockets of improvement within the entity space of the city of Jobek. Um, the oversight roles um, remains um, um, appropriate as it relates to the entities because the, the city does have a governance unit that then do interact and oversees how the boards are functioning through their shareholder compacts and, and the, 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 the agreed upon um, um, service delivery and, business, and approved business plans of these entities. So the, the city does oversee and govern the, the, the um, through their governance, um, um, the, the relevant oversight and, and, and processes at the entities. So even the issue at JRA, um, Chair, you, you, you might be aware that they, the city did then intervene and currently there is an acting uh, CEO. Um, Chair, in terms of the specific for Jobek water related governance issues, um, as far as I'm aware, Chair, I had not necessarily noted anything for, for Jobek water per se. Um, I know that the GRA one, um, but overall, Chair, all of these are overseen through the, the governance <coughs> uh, unit of the of the city. Um, Chair, with regards to the comment on the MR, I think it's the same as the, my colleague has indicated. In terms of improvements, Chair, as well, um, we, we do also look at the... Uh, um, um, in, um, action plans, as indicated, um, with, with regards to some of the deficiencies or inadequacies that we've noted with the previous ones, because um, we do, once it's finalized, it, it gets to be shared with us, we do look at it, Chair, just to then see if it will then assist the, the, the city with moving. As highlighted, Chair, our challenge is then for instances where there has been um, failure in terms of the, the, the action plans to prevent some of these issues we have identified during the audit. 
um, following the implementation of that plan is whether then the, the necessary uh, consequence um, uh, management related processes around then the, the inadequacy or the failure to implement those plans to avoid the issues that are coming through the audit if that is happening because we do not we did not necessarily observe that coming strongly from for example your your audit committees um, they um, as I indicated the issues that are coming from internal audit as well as then just holding accountable the the, the city manager um, on then the failure to 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 the failure to 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 have implemented then uh, appropriate action plans as well as preventative controls that are then helping to 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 change the situation and improve it too. so i think those are are the ones i've noted here the ones that my colleagues have touched on chair i wouldn't want to repeat on those ones um thanks chair if there's anyone that i've missed here um i can um address it All right, thank you. Let's take responses from M. Fudani. Good uh, afternoon, Chair, again. Thank you for the opportunity to respond to the questions as well. So I'll start with Honorable Smith and then work the way downwards with the questions. I think the first reflection uh, was common across was the, the partial administration process that happened at Infuleni. So it was a section 1392 partial administration that occurred for the last 18 months that uh, under the review. That process ended in the month of August last year. So just to get feedback about uh, what was the intervention and how was the impact, uh, it was over the finances of the municipality it did take over the payment process as well as the strategic department as well. And it did also uh, overlook the procurement and contract management, which is the SEM department as well. So those are the three areas. The council was still in place and being the, the, the board there was still uh, able to exercise its powers. So it was just on a partial administration process. What we did uh, not realize was any benefit from this uh, process. We still see even a regression from what was there initially specifically over the financing and the financial health as we uh, presented in our outcomes earlier, as well as the performance side of things where we're still not seeing a benefit from uh, impacting the community as well. So in terms of my assessment uh, in that time period to, uh, of the intervention, it was limited and we didn't see really any uh, capacity building, et cetera, or improvements either in the operational or in the audit outcomes as well. So the administrators, administrators contracts did come to an end in, the, in August and then the municipalities now is running um, as, as, as normal, if I can use that word as well. And in terms of a reflection on the capacity issues, so just on the finance department, uh, there was a acting CFO in place for the last financial year. The current CFO is on suspension, uh, so we did have a instability in that position. Uh, we also had a contract of the municipal manager that would have come to an end in December of the previous year. We now have an acting uh, MM in place as well. So there is a bit of instability in both the financing and the leadership positions and together with the vacancies that are there. Uh, the reflection on internal audit and audit committee, we found the internal audit not to be effective. Uh, one of the things that they did not do was to complete a plan for the year. They also, under the um, governance of the audit committee, did not review the annual financial statements uh, before being presented for audit purposes as well. And then we also found that when they do report uh, and the recommendations that are given to management, we found that those recommendations are not taken serious by management. So we do have a instance of recurring findings as well. So it is an ineffective or partially effective internal audit and audit committee that is in place. On the impact, uh, I had about three meetings with the impact in the current year. Uh, just my assessment, we do have a newly formed impact. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, it is a couple of months in place uh, from the prior year. There is a number of forensic reports that have been tabled. I think it was three financial years ago, but we're still seeing that those reports haven't uh, come through for provision where we need the appropriate remedial action and consequent management being done. So those reports then are still outstanding, and hence we have the, the issue of the lack of consequent management uh, in there as well. Uh, I think Member Smith, let's go back to the question as well of what can we do or what is happening or what can we do better there. We're finding a municipality that doesn't really have a culture of accountability. So at the AG, uh, we have now uh, um, 
embarked on a process of a culture shift at our local government uh, level, this municipality is classified as doing harm either to itself or to the to the community with which it operates. So through our processes at the AG, the one thing we do do is have strong messaging processes. So we do do our messaging in terms of our GR, the general report. We also have then the enforcement now, which is your material irregularity so, uh, processes as well. So in, in doing those two uh, initiatives and then also getting closer to the to the ground, so to speak, we do find there is change. And then change happens not overnight, but change does happen when there is a shift in the culture. So that's the steps we are employing at the moment at, at that particular municipality and then the general strategy of, of the AG as well. Yeah, I hope I covered all the questions. Just the last one on the intervention. Um, you asked for information. So just on the, the, the defense department that was there or the army, it was a it was a intervention that was temporary. At that point in time, they were there to stabilize the region due to the political and the service delivery protests that were happening happening at the time. They since moved out. However, the new players or the players that are there now is the National Department of Water and Sanitation, ran water in the municipality. So they do have an intervention plan that they have crafted. I will then share that with the committee just to also ensure that you are up to date on what's been happening in terms of the plans. Again, when we did evaluate the plans, it's a lot of um, funding that is required to back up that plan. So we're not seeing a lot of implementation on the ground in terms of fixing infrastructure and getting the water and sanitation processes effective. But I will share what I have in terms of that share. Thank you. I hope I covered all the questions. Uh, thank you very much for, for all the responses. Uh, this brings us to the, the end of our first engagement. First, let me really thank the officials from the Office of the Auditor General. It is quite clear that you were well prepared for, for, for this meeting. Honorable Smith. My apology, uh, Chairperson. I thought that we might get an opportunity for some follow-up questions um, because I do have some follow-up questions, actually. Do you have some follow-up questions? Yeah, if you don't mind, please, Chair. Okay. Let, let's do it quickly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, Chair, I, I um, want to know in terms of, uh, you know, the impact and audit committees, um, you know, are threats and intimidation not playing a big role in, in terms of the effectiveness of accountability? Why I ask this is, you know, if we, if we look at the municipality where I stay, you know, where the impact chairperson were assassinated for getting too close to, to some things, uh, you know, it, it's something that we should look at in terms of the effectiveness of that structure. Uh, and 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 the safety concerns around it. Uh, I'm interrupted. I don't know who spoke now. Okay, then, um, uh, Chairperson, I want to um, hear in terms of the administrator in in Mfuleni that was there. I understood eighteen months. Uh, what was the cost implication in terms of of that administrator? And then I want to propose, uh, Chairperson, that we actually summons the, the administrator uh, to the committee to come and account to the committee in terms of understanding what the administrator did, um, as it is clear from, from the Auditor uh, General that, that there was not much uh, that, that came from that administration. And then um, a question that uh, I also have is in terms of uh, actually, this is something that I think we should discuss. I'm not going to uh, put this last question, Chair. I just want to put those those uh, for now. Thank you. I, I want them to deal with the first, the, the, the only one question. First question, I will deal with the issue of the administrator of Infulani. Thank, uh, thank, thank you. Just Chair. quickly respond on that one. Uh, the threats, intimidation to the auditors as they do their work. Mteto Chair has got a hand up. Oh, you, you too. Okay. Come in. Um, thank you so much, uh, Chair. Uh, 
I just want to also to say, Chair, now that it has been clarified that this report, we can get it. May we ask that the, um, the, the affected municipality provide that report through our secretary of COCTA so that when we go there, we, we have the copies of that management report. It's important, Chair. They must give it. Okay. Can we get those responses, please? That's a response on the issue of intimidation and threats. Uh, thank you, Chair. Apologies. Uh, I was trying to unmute from my side. It's Mr. Tabekulu. Uh, just quickly, Chair, um, over, over the past period, um, we, from the audit side now, we, we've not encountered a lot of threats as we were conducting our work. So the numbers have been dwindling if one were to compare to the previous years. And now I'm talking specifically for the three audits or the three municipalities that we are presenting here today, and Fuleni, um, City of Joburg, as well as City of Tuane. Uh, however, Chairperson, the threats generally do remain uh, in the environment. Uh, I'm sure um, through our other reporting mechanisms, those matters have been dealt with at those committees. But specifically for the three municipalities, we've not um, seen any threats talking to, to the auditors. Um, of course, there will be robust engagements um, coming to the audit process, and certainly that has happened. And I was supposed to, in our understanding, as in the process of us discharging our mandate and in the process of the auditees responding to us, you are bound to have conversations um, uh, in terms of the different roles that all of us are allocated to. The, the comment on, on MPEC, uh, Chairperson, as I said, I think that one is more on the side of the municipalities, but talking from the Auditor General's perspective, uh, that will be my submission, Chairperson. Thank you. Oh, all right, thank you very much. Uh, let me explain this. This, as I indicated from the beginning, was a briefing session by the Office of the Auditor General. The Auditor General has given us three presentations. Uh, those that they presented this morning, uh, the committee has received those and we have studied them prior to this meeting. And this was to give an elaboration on those presentations, explain certain uh, issues and answer questions in the way that uh, we have asked those questions. The next step is that we are visiting these three municipalities next week. And I'm going to propose the following, that one, the Office of the Auditor General must favor us with just a synoptic situation in respect of the entities that account to all of these municipalities. That is the first thing. Just give us a summary of what has happened in terms of the audit outcomes of uh, those particular entities, because it's quite important to also make some reflections uh, about those particular entities. Second is that the office must avail itself uh, for the three days on our visit to these uh, uh, municipalities over, over, over the days. And I've requested that if in one of the days the, the, the Auditor General is available, uh, it will be nice that she attends one of the sessions so that it becomes clear that we have elevated these particular issues at that, at that level to help us to deal with these particular issues and to get a better understanding thereof. Now, Moss and Fuat and my team, when we go there, just make sure that the, the municipalities themselves prepare reports for, for members and they must forward those reports a week earlier so that we study those particular reports about the state of the municipalities plus especially the post-action plans, how they have responded and how they deal with the issues which are raised by the by the Auditor General. That is quite important. Uh, for us, we need to ensure that when we go to these municipalities, we, we are fully prepared and that 
enhance our engagement with uh, those particular municipalities. But thirdly, importantly, boss, just make sure that all the stakeholders per municipality are invited. We, we want to engage with the internal stakeholders, that is the politicians, as well as the city administration in each municipality. We also want to engage with uh, the external stakeholders uh, of the municipality so that we understand their views about, about what is happening. Specifically, with regard to the intervention, we, we need the MEC for Kongta in Gauteng to brief this committee about the work that they did in Swani through the administration for the period in which they were deployed, that they were working in Swani uh, before the, the, the decision, their decision was declared unlawful by the court. We need to know what happened and what improvements have they registered in that respect. But we also want specifically to address, and, and in that sense, if the administrator person who was deployed in Swani is available, and he, which I think he must be available, uh, he must be requested to attend the meeting itself. But we also want the administrator, the MEC, to brief us because the administrator is a representative of the department. We want the, 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 the MEC to speak to that as well. The administrator who spent 18 months in, in M. Fuluen, as well as the report thereof. And if the administrator, and he should be available, that he must also be part of the meeting so that in case that we want to engage with the administrator, we, we must do that. Other members of this committee will remember that we did engage in the past with uh, the previous MEC of Cocktail and Haute with regard to El We, in that engagement, we express our reservations about how the administrator was appointed, the work that the administrator was doing. And this time around, we need to engage with that particular aspect. And we can only do so if that information is available for us. And, and in my respective view, that will help this committee to really and comprehensively uh, uh, prepare for, for each oversight visit in, in the fountain starting from the 13th of or the 13th of this month. With that, honorable members, that concludes our, our engagement with uh, the Office of the Auditor General. And once more, thank you very much for attending and sharing with us this crucial information that you shared with us. It is quite important. And from where I am, I hope I speak on behalf of uh, the committee in its entirety that uh, this was essential. It was helpful. It will help us as we prepare fully for the oversight visit. Uh, with those words, can I say that uh, the meeting is, is adjourned uh, until we, we meet again as a committee uh, on our way to, to Swani. And if there's anything, uh, the administration, the committee will communicate it with, uh, with, with the members of the committee. With that, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned.